I'm Reverend Rachel Tabor Hamilton, the Rector of Trinity Episcopal Church in Everett, Washington, and I'm the coordinator for our Diocesan Ethnic Ministries Circles of Color, which is a, a networking of our different ethnic ministries and communities. My name is Anila Afzali, and I am the Executive Director of the American Muslim Empowerment Network at the Muslim Association of Puget Sound, MAPS Amen. We at, we at. Jennifer Bearskin Sista, Stoholpschad, Alutchad, Bedat Shwaklam. Hello, my name is Jennifer Bearskin. I am Sto I am Snohomish and I am Alut. I am the youngest daughter of the sea monster man. I firmly believe that our various faith traditions teach us to get to know each other, like the Quran specifically says, that our diversity was made specifically so that we can get to know each other, not to despise one another. And I believe that interfaith or multi-faith work helps us live out our faith values by doing what I believe God wants us to do, which is to show love for our neighbors. But you can't love your neighbor unless you know your neighbor. And knowing our neighbor helps us to build the kinds of bonds of relationship, of love, of unity, of solidarity that is so desperately needed in a divided world, especially at a time when there's so much misinformation and disinformation being promoted in a way to really demonize certain communities and marginalize them and cause uh, things like hate crimes, discrimination, school bullying, and so much more to happen against certain individual groups of folks. And the more we can engage in this kind of work of bringing people together from all faith traditions, the more effective we can be in fighting the various evils of oppression. And also specifically, faith leaders, especially of different faith backgrounds, coming together with a moral voice on a justice issue of the day carries so much weight and power. And I have personally witnessed the impact of that kind of leadership, that moral leadership of faith leaders of different backgrounds standing united on with a moral position, a united moral position on a specific issue. It has moved people literally to tears, even those who are not from a faith background. So I know the power of this kind of interfaith and multi-faith work, both at a leadership level and an on the ground level. And the, the urgency and the need for it is greater now than ever. From what I've been taught in our culture here, that a community is what, is what keeps us going together as a whole. So we don't believe that any one task can be done by oneself. There's not even the word I in our language because it is all we. We always, going back to time immemorial, understood the balance of working together, whether that's with the plant people or with the salmon people or with the four-legged people or the winged people. It's important that all people come together to work together, to push forward together, to yahop together. Because in our modern day time and in our current society, we've been taught that nothing can be achieved unless you do it yourself. When in, in the terms of teachings from long ago and just how Mother Earth as a whole works together, we know in our teachings that we all must come together as one and work as one so that we can maintain balance and continue to build relations, relatives, and ultimately to be able to work together as a community. It's a, it's a calling. You know, not every person of color or representative of an ethnic group is going to feel like it's their comfort zone or even their responsibility to be engaged in education of other people. But uh, folks like me, folks like the people in past understanding who are uh, people of color who are committed are really willing to sort of be those educational guides and those entryways 
into their cultures and in their belief systems. And that's the precious gift. Uh, so I, I think that is something that passed the understanding and the people who uh, work within it um, as people of color uh, have that commitment. And I've, I've appreciated that in the trainings very, very much to allow uh, folks to, to be educators of their own traditions. They, no one knows it as well as they do. Uh, so, so just sitting at the, at the feet of the masters of people who have lived in those traditions uh, all their lives is a wonderful, wonderful gift. Coming from a uh, family, my, my father, Don Bon, who is the sea monster man, who is a victim of boarding schools, taught us about the importance of forgiveness. He fought in the Vietnam War, and he had to carry a priest across uh, a minefield to get him to safety. And he went into the line of danger, even though this man represented what he experienced that was intergenerational trauma and um, a type of forgiveness that he knew he had to move forward. And that meant seeing that priest as a human being first, even though many did not see us as indigenous communities as human beings, but that he would do what was right in his heart, in his hutch, and he would do what he could to, to get this man to safety. From what I've been told is that these two had a wonderful relationship, friendship going forward. Um, and they would send each other, you know, Christmas cards. And they, they I believe, healed a lot of trauma and a lot of what, you know, specified genocide genocide of our people that had come through colonialism and um, I feel disguised in the terms of, of certain religions or beliefs, I feel that it was important to understand that you have to forgive your enemies and learn how to make relatives. And that was an example that I learned from him that he did that. So I believe working in this type of organization to bring about multiple belief systems and faiths to work together, to intersect, to ultimately uproot that foundation of hate that has, that has intertwined into many different uh, faiths and belief systems. And the only people that are going to change those um, to change it from the light to the to change from dark to light, essentially is going to be us working together. Uh, I, I think maybe in terms of impact, uh, some of the ones I remember are those transformational moments that we've been able to experience. Uh, I remember in particular, uh, the first faith over fear training that we did, we did in Longview, Washington. Uh, and I remember that one because it was our first one, it was intentionally uh, chosen to be in a sort of more conservative rural town in Washington, uh, and we didn't know what to expect. Uh, and I remember the, the church had initially put out something like 30 chairs, thinking, you know, we'll have a small group there. Uh, and, and the church leaders that we were working with had no idea how many people to expect either. Um, and I also remember the fear and anxiety that a lot of folks had about that. Uh, people were, I, I literally heard somebody tell me to wear a bulletproof vest. Uh, people were worried for my safety and security. Uh, and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm I'm going to trust in God and then go do uh, uh, this this first event and uh, see how it goes. Uh, and we showed up and uh, people kept coming in. You know, it's the 30 chairs, they had to keep bringing out more chairs and more chairs. And eventually the room that they had was packed. I think we had something like 60 people there. Um, and again, a lot of these uh, folks were people who had never met a Muslim in person before. Uh, and I remember two separate people 
coming up to me um, and telling me that, telling me that they had never met a Muslim before, that they had believed the lies, the misinformation that the anti-Muslim industry promotes, um, and that that sort of that presentation, that time together, about two hours together, really impacted them. Um, and, and they even cried and gave me a hug. And they admitted that they had been sort of holding this negative sort of fear and, and hatred in their hearts and didn't even realize it. And to kind of like be able to like let go of some of that uh, was was really powerful to them and to have that moment of bonding uh, was was really sort of transformational.